Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. The Anvil Legionnaire is now available to all backers as a concept sale, and I decided to rather than just cover the ship in isolation, I would use it as a reason to look at the entire category of troop ships. By troop ships, I mean ships that are in some way customized or specialized for bringing troops and possibly their vehicles to the battle zone. And the next question is, how much as a player do you need to have a specialized troop ship at all? When watching Jump Down 2 videos, I have just as often seen groups just piling out an Avenger rather than having some sort of specialized troop ship. More likely because, well, the Avenger was already on the landing pad. Or let's take a specific example. You are out with your friends in a carrot and you want to do a ground assault. You have a Valkyrie back at the station. What does the Valkyrie have that would make you want to check in the carrot and take out the Valk? Space for vehicles? Uh, with Carrick has it. Ground clearing guns? Um, Carrick has it. Room for 20? Not dedicated jump seats, but yes. The Valk only has a smaller footprint on its side, while the Carrick has a hangar and a med bay. So from a player's standpoint, using a troop ship might make a particular assault easier or more convenient, but it isn't ever likely to be required in the same way that, say, a mining ship is required to do mining. Yes, the Legionnaire will allow you to avoid going EVA and having to use a breaching charge or cutting tool to open the door, but you can do that. I suspect that the core reason that the Legionnaire was designed was that it was turned out to be a huge task to teach NPC AI to be able to go EVA, use a breaching charge, and negotiate the change in gravity grids from entering a ship from EVA. So, primarily for Squadron 42, they designed the ship so that NPC hostiles could participate in a ship boarding assault using only the nav mesh feature. And then, of course, made it available to all of us to buy because, of course, they would. And, of course, many of us would buy it. So let's run through chronologically backwards all the various troop ships that are available to us as backers. Since it is the newest, let's start with the Legionnaire, which has a crew of two, eight jump seats, and no vehicle storage. The Legionnaire's pluses. First of all, it's small. It clearly has been designed to fit barely in the extra small hangar dimensions. This means that, for example, you can fit one in the hangar bay of an Odyssey or Polaris or Liberator. This may be really key since let's say you disable a ship with your Polaris, but let's say you don't want to bring the ship too close or have a long and dangerous EVA. In fact, this may be the defining use case of the Legionnaire. Next, Legionnaire is cheap. It is even at the top end of what you would regard as an LTI token cheap. However, that secret CIG ship pricing spreadsheet is laid out, they really worked it to stretch the value proposition here. In fact, it is so cheap that there is a quirk that I will get to later that may provide you another reason to buy it. It has tough armor and shields and eliminates the entire EVA step in ship boarding. Now, the Legionnaire's minuses. It is weak in the gun department, just two size two turrets. And unless during concept development they move the rear turret to the underside, which I suspect they will, the ship is way vulnerable on the underside. Next, it's not standalone. Any ship worth an eight-person boarding party is not going to be disabled by the Legionnaire alone, and apparently no beds for an extended deployment, which is partially offset, of course, by being carrier-friendly. And finally, it's not multi-role. I guess you could do box deliveries in it or use it as your personal transportation, but nothing really obvious stands out as an alternative activity for being a boarding craft. And so the special role of the ship is to direct capture ships intact in space. The military may occasionally have a need to do that, but in private hands, if you think that sounds a little bit like piracy, you're wrong. It sounds exactly like piracy. So the Legionnaire may be a certain component of any pirate fleet, right along with the RSI Mantis, which certainly makes the Drake folks say, hey, how come we're the ones with the bad rep? Now, as we're doing the same role not in a custom troop ship, Nobody else the same size has a docking tunnel, so I guess you would just say an Avenger. Next youngest, the Cutlass Steel. And the relative frugality and value of the Legionnaire seems to be an apology for the absurdity in those same categories for the Steel. It has a crew and 19 jump seats and no vehicle carrying capacity or cargo. The Steel's strengths is guns, 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 guns. Five door-mounted Gatlings. Second, it is standalone. There's a good chance that the steel alone can take out the air patrol and the door guns and drive off any ground opposition, leaving the landing itself to be just a mop up and hold the ground operation. Plus, it does have beds for the two crew, which is helpful for extended deployments. The steel's weaknesses. It is expensive. All those guns and seats add up. It puts too many eggs in one fragile basket, and it isn't multi-role, or at least not as multi-role as it should be. 
It is really rather painful to see all that flexibility in cargo and vehicle hauling be replaced with too many guns and too many seats. On the other hand, with the weapons loader of the Cutlass, one could still use it for bounty hunting and such, and just not use all those seats. So the special role of the steel is suppressive fire, where you just want to saturate an air with bullets prior to landing. And as to the general purpose ship you would use instead, the answer is obvious, the Cutlass Black, with so much more usefulness in vehicle and cargo at a price that's so much lower. The next youngest is the Valkyrie, and this is a big and well-rounded dropship that was intended to be the complete deal. It has a crew of five, 20 jump seats, and a vehicle bay suitable for rovers and buggies. The Valkyrie's pluses? It is standalone. With four turrets and two door guns, it is plenty enough firepower to clear opposition in area and to continue to fly close air support for the advance. And with five beds for the crew, it is capable of extended deployments. It can bring a substantial force to the battle. It almost falls in the Cutlass Steel's flaw of putting too many eggs in one basket, but it is a much better protected basket. And it is multi-role since you can put a wide variety of things in the vehicle bay. It may not be all that economical at those other roles, but it can do them reasonably well. One of the Valkyrie's minuses. It's large compared to many of these other choices in troop ships, and it is expensive compared to some of these other choices in troop ships. So the use case of the Valkyrie is to clear and land the troops at a safe distance from battle and then provide air cover for the advance to the main battle, rather than trying to bring a strike force right to the point of contact. As to the non-specialized ship to use in a similar role, I might consider the Mercury Star Runner or the Constellation. Now for the next newest troop ship, which might at first strike you as not qualifying at one, and that is the Hercules M2. Now let's let me point out this. All these other troop ships are optional, but if your battle order includes tanks, you're bringing a Hercules. At present, it is simply no other choice. The M2 has a crew of three and 12 jump seats, as well as a huge cargo bay capable of holding two tongs and additional rovers and buggies and bike-sized vehicles. Who knows how many troops you could squeeze in just standing around space. The pluses of the Hercules? Tonks. It brings tonks. Enough said. Obviously, it is multi-role. If you can't figure out how to make money with a Herc between combat runs, you have a serious lack of imagination. And finally, it is mostly self-sufficient, but it's such a valuable asset you are unlikely to bring it near a combat zone without companions. Now for the minuses. Obviously, it is neither small nor cheap, but if it holds tonks, of course it is big and expensive. The specialization of the Hercules is, of course, heavy armored assault landing from a distance from the actual battle and then withdrawing and awaiting call for retrieval. It is just too big a target for close air support. Unless, of course, we are instead talking about an A2, in which case the whole subject of clearing the battle zone is a non-issue. As to what non-troop ship alternatives to use instead, the answer is obvious. The Hercules C2. Next youngest, the Prowler. This is a straight-up assault ship that can come at you fairly close with stealth, then come right at you with impressive guns, and then right at the end dump out the troops to be a coup d'etat. The strong points of the Prowler? Low signature. By the time you know they are coming at you, they are already shooting at you and possibly already inside minimum missile range. High firepower with two size 4 pylon mounted cannons or two size 5 fixed plus dual size 3 on a remote turret. Rapid deployment. Eight of those 16 standing jump seats have a direct door out and the remaining eight are right nearby. So the initial fraction of a second of deployment are much quicker and smoother. And finally, it is standalone. It has enough firepower to take care of itself. And now for the downsides. The combination of the alien tax and the stealth tax and the big guns really does a number on the price of the ship. You can almost buy four legionnaires for the price of the Prowler. It is more expensive than a C2 Hercules. It is also definitely not multi-role. It does have enough firepower to perhaps work as a heavy fighter, but no reason why. There is no vehicle capability and barely enough space to put a parcel anywhere, plus no beds for extended deployment by the crew. The specialization of the Prowler is direct close assault either in space or even more likely on the ground. And what non-troop ship specialized alternative for the Prowler would I say? As for a non-troop ship specialized alternative for the Prowler, I would say the Redeemer. It has even more forward punch, at least a few seats and some standing room, but it lacks the rapid exit. It also is over $100 cheaper. And finally we get to the very first ship that CIG sold us under the premise of being a specialized troop ship. And that is the Vanguard Hoplite as a crew of two and six jump seats. First, the pluses. 
it's multi-role. The Vanguard isn't so much a dropship as a heavy fighter with extra seating. Sure, it may lack some of the extra features of other Vanguards have, including the not insignificant feature of beds for the two crew, but pretty much anything you can call upon a heavy fighter to do, the hoplite can do well enough at. High power weapons and, for a dropship, fighter level maneuverability. And it is self-sufficient. Again, it is a heavy fighter after all. As for the negatives, the main negative is that it only holds six and no vehicles. Capacity-wise, it is the smallest troop ship in this list. It also isn't particularly cheap because of the value of all those guns and being a heavy fighter. It costs roughly twice the cost of Legionnaire. Remember that for just a second. So the use case of the Vanguard Hoplite is cases where you need a serious fighter to disable the target but don't need a large assault team to control it. Think of it. How many occupants are there likely to be in a Freelancer Max or a Hull B or even a Hercules C? Do you really need a team of eight to conquer a crew of three? Six is likely fine. So the Vanguard Hoplite is a good single ship solution for a small team taking on medium sized targets. Which brings me to the promised quirky reason to buy the Legionnaire. The loner ship on the Legionnaire is the Vanguard Hoplite. Yes, a ship twice the price. That's often the thing forgotten about by people who smirk about buying a JPEG on concept sales. The thing is you do get something with the JPEG, sometimes an even more valuable something. As for the non troop ship alternative to the hoplite, well, obviously any of the other vanguards and have the guys either stand around the hallways or use the two beds. Which leads me to a concluding comment about what CIG could do to make these troop ships actually more useful than just using a general purpose ship and having the troops pile inside it and that is to allow bed log out while sitting in a dedicated jump seat. Maybe it might be less restorative in some way and get you zero comfort points, but I've slept on enough airplane seats to know that it's possible. Now for an update on our Grow the Channel Ship giveaway. As of recording, we are breaking 74% of the subscriber goal and 66% of the membership goal on our way to giving someone their choice of either the Anvil Liberator, the ship shipping ship for shipping your ships, or the Misk Odyssey long duration exploration carrier. Members, you're entered automatically, and if the winner was a member as of the publication date of the winning video and at the drawing date, they will win both of the ships, the Liberator and the Odyssey. For everybody else, you just be a subscriber and comment using the secret word. And the secret word for this video is what I said the Drake folks would be saying. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Danny Raymond for Ray's Guide. The next shuttle?